All right, we continue our summer interview series. Today we have the pleasure of speaking to Sanford football player Josh Mathias and hailing from Chicago land, Illinois. Mike is with us too. Josh, how are you, man? You know, I'm I'm living the dream, you know what I'm saying? You know, people ask, you know, how's life treating you? Mm -hmm. I always got to let them know how am I treating life? Cuz <laughs> you know, I'm living in it. So, for sure. I love that. Mike, how are you? Doing all right, man. Doing all right. Josh, we've wanted to have you on for quite a while. Ever since the uh, dominant performance against North Dakota State in that playoff game, I mean, you were on our radar your first year at Sanford, but then especially the exclamation point being that game. Uh, always fun to have a D lineman. You are our second one. Our first one was Tay Berry. Uh, yeah, so saw, we have yeah. quite, we're collecting quite the crew here. If we ever wanted to get a, a podcast alumni team, we'd be pretty loaded. Uh, so it's, yeah. it's good to have you, man. I appreciate it, y'all. All right, so we're just going to kick it off from the beginning. Young Josh, uh, born Young and raised Josh. in Chicago, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so let's just start from there, man. What what was growing up in, in my opinion, the greatest city in America like? Oh, yeah. See, I like that junk. Man. Right. I try to convince these boys down here, it's but the they best. don't believe me. It's, it's, the, best. it's the best. Except so, the winter. Yeah. It's That's the best, the, like, five the months winter, out of the year. Still yeah. the best. No, the winter's no. still good. You get no. used to it. That the doesn't make it Texas good. Don't that mean nothing. The polar vortex Humans are adaptable. Are. Where that doesn't make it good. But young Josh. Young Josh, man. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was actually – so I was born in prison. My mother was in prison at the time um, when I was born. Like, she found out she was pregnant with me uh, while she was in prison. And, um, you know, I stayed with my grandma for a few years till my mother got out. Yep. She got um, – she started a, like, little prison ministry, got saved. Like, it was a cool little thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we pretty much stayed in, like, uh, apartments my whole life growing up in Chicago – it wasn't like the best situations, but um, that's really where I feel like I get my resilience and strength from is my mom. Cause like she's been through so much, but she continues to just go. Like she always tells me there's so many times she wanted to quit, but she never gave up. So that's really what pushes me forward. So yeah, it wasn't the best living uh, just in apartments in Chicago. We bounced around from apartments all the time, but um, it was just like, you know, okay areas. I tried to play soccer. Cause I, I stayed in a, in a primarily Hispanic neighborhood okay. and um, I tried to play soccer with them boys, but it never worked out. I, we always just ended up getting in fights cause I'd be upset that, you sure. know, it just made me fall on my face. And now here we are, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I was, I was on a soccer team uh, all the way until like, I want to say second grade. Like I was playing actual soccer yeah. and um, I fell on a kid and broke his um what bone is this the collarbone collarbone yeah. i broke his collarbone and we had to have a little talk with like the association and my coach at the time said hey why don't you try to put him in football <laughs> my mom was like i mean you know if that's what he wants to do mm -hmm. and that next summer i went to uh sign up for football and they said so this was me in third grade they said yeah he's so heavy that he has to play with eighth graders my mom was like, what? This he's he's going to die in third, third grade? Yeah, yeah, because uh -huh. at the time, like, it do, it didn't go by age. It went by weight. By weight. So I was oh, I was wow. just the eighth grade weight. And um, that's, that was pretty much my whole life. But once I started playing football, like, um, I'd say it was like an escape, uh, especially with, like, my father not being in my life. You know, uh, he was he's actually in prison as well. Uh, he's still uh, serving time right now, but um, that was really a big escape for me because I was I was just a bad kid growing up. Like I just wanted to fight. Mm -hmm. I was always in the principal's office. Shout out to Miss Bailey. She I was in her office every day. Like she's calling my mom. Josh did this. Josh did that. And I was like, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, football was really something that was like an outlet for me. You know, it, I wish like I had some more guidance to where like. I knew about the extra training and like playing multiple sports cross training. Like sure. that, that's just not the resources we, me and my mom really knew about at the time. But um, that's definitely something like, obviously I can prepare my kids for in the future. But um, 
so it was just football and like I played football, loved it. School, you know, it was a little rocky. There wasn't like much to look up to at yeah. the time. Like in Chicago, you feel me? Like there wasn't nobody I truly looked up to. Like obviously football players, but you know, I just loved playing it. And at first, you know, I, I got a, I got bullied a little bit. You know what I'm saying? The eighth graders are playing. I can imagine. Third grade. Yeah, yeah. You know, third grader. I mean, a little, little pip straight where you. Were you holding your own? Were you picking fights with eighth graders back back in the day? Oh yeah, I'd get fights. I'd get, yeah. I'd get beat up, but I'd okay. pick them. You know what I'm saying? I'd and like, and and they would just used to make fun of me so bad because like obviously I'm just young. And the, there was this one right. time, my grandma was watching my practice, and I'm like sitting there trying to do his drill, and the coach's son comes up and pushes me in the back. Like I'm square on my face. I'm out of breath. My grandma hops out of the car. She's like, hey, I saw that the whole team's laughing at me. I'm like, oh, my oh, gosh. Man. So I had to do something about it. I got up and started swinging on, bro. No way. <laughs> that, that point forward, you know, like, they kind of were like, okay, like, he got a little ump to him. And, you know, we started being a little better. So, that yeah, is I, I just started. Yeah, That's it, was, it was a wild time. You're a I bulldog from, from the beginning. Time. Yeah. Yeah. It was wild. All right, wild. so talk about this league. So, like, what kind of – this is like a little league, fo- like, peewee football in Chicago. Uh-huh. So, does, does, does Chicago – I didn't realize they played football up there. Whoa. <laughs> we, we play great football in Chicago. You know, it, there's a statistic that Chicago produces the most pro athletes out of any other city. You can fact check me on that. So of course we we play multiple sports, but that that is the cool difference though between up north and the south. Like I didn't know spring ball was a thing. Like there's no such thing as spring ball up north. Like obviously it's snowing still. So right. um, yeah, I had no idea about that. But you know, for about three three months, you know, some some people get lucky to play four months of football. I've always been on the trash teams, <laughs> but you know. I play about three months of football before it gets cold. So, yeah. So what do you do in the other nine months of the year? Are you training for football or were you playing other sports by the time you got into middle and high school? So elementary school, middle school, man, I was just sitting on my butt. I remember one summer I played Modern Warfare 3 the whole summer on my PS3. <laughs> like, I, it's just like, because, like, you don't really want to – my mom didn't really let me stay outside too much, you know, she let me go to Rose Park one time and I lost my privileges because me and this dude got in a fight. It was, it's just what it was, you know. I'm trying to play basketball. You know, I'm one of those guys who, I'm going to compete. I'm mm-hmm. going to compete. Yeah. But at the time, I couldn't really play. You know what I'm saying? So, had to get into it with him. I was just a sore loser. I'm losing in soccer. I want to fight. I'm losing in basketball. I want to fight. So, that's just how it was. But, um, no, yeah, so... I, I just didn't really know about like other sports and different things like that. So I just played football and then the nine months I'm just like not doing much. Same thing with middle school. Like I just really didn't know about other sports. Uh, one of my good friends though, his dad tried to get me into wrestling in middle school and I was like, Oh, absolutely not. But it changed in high school. Interesting. It really did. Yeah. So in high school, I actually started wrestling my huh. freshman year. Yeah. I tried out, for the basketball team, my freshman year, 30 minutes in, they cut me. I was the first person cut. I was like, That's oh, brutal. That's yeah. brutal. He told me, in all honesty, you know, you're the weight of a big man, but you're the height of a point guard. And I was like, ah, <laughs> man. Savage. So, you know, I teared up a bit. I did tear up a bit. I really thought I was going to be on the basketball team, but, you know, he broke. And, and then I'm thinking, you know, my mom told me Michael Jordan got cut from his high school. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna try it again next year. But as I was walking out, our wrestling coach, uh, Mr. Urbanski, was standing out there with a clipboard, and he said, "Oh, perfect, first one to get cut. I'll That's see you. Good... I'll see you in pra- practice on Tuesday." I was like, "That's a good oh, wrestling no. coach name, Urbanski." Okay. Yeah, Urbanski. Yep, and. He called my mom, and my mom's like, yeah, you might as well go ahead and try it. So I did. And I'm pretty grateful I did. Like, I mean, they had me on they had me on varsity as a freshman. So, like, 
I've never wrestled in my life, and I'm wrestling dudes like, ah, uh, what was his name? I want to say it was either like Jared Allen or Josh Allen. He he played uh, O line at Michigan State, mm. and then he he just he won a Super Bowl with the I want to say Patriots or Eagles. Yeah, but he's and he whooped my tail. I'm like I'm going I'm against. Sure. I don't know. If, yeah, That's I don't know if y'all crazy. know. Uh, like any like heavyweight wrestling or whatever, but mm-hmm. I, I wrestled this one dude who's a heavy who's the starting heavyweight for Iowa right now. He was at this school like, called Hananega. They're a dynasty right now, aren't they? Man, like, I feel like Iowa's known for tail. wrestlers. Literally, were you so, going? Were you doing the wrestling thing where you would like have to lose lose the weight to try to? Because when I was in high school, cutting. the wrestlers would try to cut like twenty yeah. pounds. Yeah. I was a heavyweight, so that ranges from two twenty five to two eighty five. So you just okay. you pretty much have a lot of freedom. That is so a I didn't crazy have range. It's a wide range. Yeah. yeah. So you could yeah, be wrestling is. some kid that was two thirty. Yeah, but those kids are normally really fast, quick, strong. So mm. it's not much of a drop off. Like they they can hold their own pretty much. Gotcha. So yeah, it was it was a little rough at the beginning. You know, I still I still did win a lot more than I lost surprisingly, but um. As I started like getting older, you know, wrestling more, I tried track a little bit, but I really wasn't like feeling the throwing and all that. But going back, I wish I did like some speed training with them or something because that would have been beneficial. That's but uh, I just field is yeah, it is. boring. It is, it is. So I did, I just did some Greco wrestling in the springs and summer. So I really started taking like wrestling seriously. No kidding, um, that's sweet. Yeah, and then you know I started being pretty good. I started like making it to sectionals my sophomore and um, junior year, and then senior year I ended up being third in state um, wrestling at state. So yeah, I was a pretty good wrestler. Um, it was fun. I had some offers because like really I would do this. Yeah, yeah, I would do this thing where uh, like you, you have to warm up in the beginning, right? And a lot of heavyweights are like you know fatter guys. You know they don't look that <laughs> much athletic. So I would do this thing where I'd warm up. And I'd like be doing cartwheels and junk. Like I just started being athletic as heck. But then I know how to do the splits. So I just sit in the splits, and they'd be like, "Oh my gosh, like I'm about to get you murdered." Can, you can do the splits. I can do. The, yeah, that's the one interesting fact about me. I can do the splits. Dude, I don't know how. I that's really don't honestly. Know how I can do it. That's the most incredible thing you've said yeah. so far. Yeah, I, I don't know how I could do it, but I just did it one day, and I wow. I just kept on going with it. So that's a bull- when I was wrestling at state uh, in at the University of Illinois, that's where we have state. The coaches instantly came up to me. They're like, oh, yeah, like, you know, talking offers, all that. So, yeah, I had a few offers for wrestling. Um, there were some that's D3 cool. offers, too. But, yeah, I, I really fooled with wrestling. I just knew, though, like, college wrestling is a different beast. Like, I I just knew it, it wasn't really that. And football's always been, like, you know, the sport I loved. But Dude, it did help me a lot. Yeah, those college wrestlers are – crazy Literally. they're the ones with like the cauliflower ear and yeah. that's what they look for and you're like no guys. i had some cauliflower ear i'm yeah. sure my, my right ear yeah. bends because like because you got to get it drained it's this uh, whole thing but yeah no wrestling is a different animal like our practices like it was just crazy yeah no that but i mean it's fit like it, they say the best linemen make the or the best wrestlers make the best linemen so yeah. it and I can't help but laugh at you think thinking of you doing like the cartwheels and the splits <laughs> because you're right. Like yeah. when the heavyweights come out in those singlets, it's like, all right, big boys here. Facts. But then when yeah. they're out there rolling they're around, it's like flips. Oh, all right. Yeah. So I was just mobile. I Same even time. I even uh I was doing some swimming my senior year too. Whoa. Yeah. Hey. So I just needed a job one time. And this fair came in this this uh, company called British Swim School was there. And they were like, yeah, you know, uh, instructors get paid like 15 an hour. I'm like, whoa, what? So instantly just started learning how to swim. And then I even started doing a little swim team stuff. You know, I'm doing the butterfly. Yeah, what was your I race? Just, what was your What was your best event? My best event, you know what I'm saying, had to be freestyle. You know, I was... I was, I'm really getting into it, you know, 
the That's side, incredible. the side breathing, all that junk. Like uh, I can't really I mean, say a D lineman has a swimmer's build, but yeah, uh, were you the biggest really. swimmer out there? Oh yeah, I, I was terrible. Yeah, I was bad. I the the endurance you have to have is insane. Yeah, yeah. it's it's insane. not breathing like, either. It's yeah. What? But you know, breast stroke. I, I was good at all that. Like I'm just a mobile guy, I guess. You know, That's I wanted amazing. to try different things. You're the and first actually, swimmer we've had on the podcast. Yeah, Congratulations. So. Yeah. Man, Jeb was I a only, swimmer. I only did, Jeb's not on here. Right. Really? I only did two two events. And uh, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this junk again. But it that's was fun while that's a different. Time. That's a different kind of burn. When oh, your muscles yeah. start burning in the water. Oof. I still did some. I still instructed, though. But, yeah, there were so many things. like, And then the one track event I did was uh, – Triple jump. Okay. Triple jump? I got second place. I got second place. Dude. So why not the long jump? Why the triple jump? They were just like, hey, we need some guys to do some yeah. triple jump. We have, we don't have a lot of people. And uh, it was a event against this school called Fenton High School. And it's like, you know, a smaller school. And uh, it's a lot of like shorter Hispanic guys there. So I got second. Okay. And I'll always there, there's it. the caveat we were waiting on. There's the caveat. Okay. I'll always yeah, talk to us about your high. So what was, what was your like middle school and high school like? Big, small. Like what are we? What were you doing? Yeah. So, yeah. Middle school, high school, I've always been big. Like I, I've always been the the bigger schools. Middle school, it probably we probably had like two thousand kids in the middle school. Like yeah, yeah we had a lot of. That's it easy. was a lot of wow. big. Yeah. And then high school, about 5,000. Like, my graduating class was 1,200, I think. So, Dude, yeah, I always went to the – It's like Sanford right there in high school. Yeah, That's wild. literally, literally. So, it, it was fun. I, I loved the, like, public school, big school vibe. I just loved it. And, like, everyone in our conference was big schools. So it was just yeah. cool, like the rivalry. Oh, like, I, I bet some of those it. wrestling matches were crazy. Like, who was your – Oh, my Who gosh. was your rival? Biggest rival was Oak Park River Forest. Oh, the Huskies, they, they're because they're like nationally ranked. Like they like throw um, clinics, all that. So like they're always good. Like gotcha. they're sending guys D one. So yeah, that was our biggest rivals. And like we beat them our senior year, and it was just this crazy thing. Like we were waving them goodbye. Like there was a, like our rivalries were so like heartfelt. Like yeah. a lot of times we can't even shake hands with the other team because like yeah. we don't like them, I and that's just that. how it was. I love yeah. that. It's in awesome. football, so they dominated wrestling. Sounds like till your senior year. What about football? Football, um, man, Glenbard West was our biggest rival. They just would pounce on us bad, like every year. Um, and you know, they brought me up my freshman year. We went zero and eleven, zero and ten. Sophomore year, brought up again, one and nine. That's tough. Then junior year, you know, okay. new coaching staff. Four and five. Oh, hey. Okay. Oh, yeah. Improvement. Senior, you know, Improvement. It's we're, we've been working hard all summer. Yeah. Seniors are finally here. We're about to go crazy. Four and five again. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know that it was rough for us. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I actually and I didn't I didn't play D line like I played O line freshman sophomore junior senior year. Where they O-line. have really? I was left guard. Well, okay. so. Freshman and sophomore, I was left tackle. Junior, senior year, I was left guard. I was like all conference, all state. I was pretty good at O line, and I had some offers for O line as well. Oh, Josh, and then I an just, I just did both sides. If you have an ounce of athleticism on the O line, you're automatically a beast. So yeah, I'm yeah, sure you. Okay. No, 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 no lineman can do the splits, much yeah, less a cartwheel. Uh, that, that's the difference, though. Like a lot of D linemen say, like, "Oh, I'd hate to play O line." Like. O line and I'm like, oh, I so wish I could play D line. I love O line. Like, if I, if I was if I was a little taller, I promise I'd still be playing it. Like, it's just so fulfilling the the you know pass setting. I love burying dudes. Like, I was that type of guy. So O line was fun, and then I just went both ways my senior year. But um, yeah, I loved it. I loved That's it. That's awesome. All right, so you're playing O line up until your senior year. Y'all's teams were not that good. Uh, did you all have any D1 guys uh, at all? Yeah, so um, my school wasn't really known for sending guys D1. 
Uh, we had one guy, the class before me, Zane Heemsaw. He was like the six five linebacker, middle linebacker we had. Um, okay. And he had offers to like Toledo. Like he had a bunch of offers. Nice. Um, but then he decided to walk on to uh, Notre Dame. So nice. uh, I would too if I had that option. Yeah. Yeah. He was a really smart guy. Like he, he, he still went for free. Like he still went to Notre Dame for free. He was that was smart. Say, that's so a, that's a steep price tag, Notre Dame. Oh, yeah. So he, <laughs> he, he's always done pretty good. And then I was like one of the um, first guys to like, get D1 offers out of my high school. Uh, and we had, like, if you put it in perspective, I was one of the smallest guys on our O-line. Like, our O-line was massive. Like, we had guys like – his name was Timmy Glavin. He was, like, 6'5", 300. Danny it's Wagner, he was 6'3", uh, 300. We had Jack Wall. He was, like, 6'5", 300. So, we had some big guys on our O-line. Um and we yeah, didn't let up that's, any that's sacks. That's an intimidating my force. No yeah, sacks. Yeah, we, we let up zero sacks. Zero sacks. Yeah, no sacks. Did y'all run but the option? Our, we ran option my freshman and sophomore year, but okay. not my. But y'all did year. throw we, it your senior year. Yeah, we threw it, and uh, our quarterback, um, you know, love the love the guy, but uh, <laughs> he threw. I think it was like twenty nine interceptions that year, but Oof. he didn't get sacked once. So. <laughs> I was joking earlier, but honestly, maybe y'all should have just kept running the option. Maybe you would have gotten to about seven wins. My goodness, 29 yeah. interceptions? That's, 29. That's like four losses. Five losses? I mean, that's a, that's 10 losses. I mean, Wait, 29 10. interceptions in, in 10 game, in nine games? That is tough. crazy, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was tough. Uh, there's no shot he yeah. listens to this, but uh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Before we get before we get to recruiting, though, I do want to hear about. All right, so you're a troublemaker. Uh, you're the fighter. So, who was like the guiding force in your life to get you to this point in high school? Right, like you're picking fights as a third grader uh, to the eighth grade. You got to stay alive. It's like, dang, some of those kids can beat you up bad. Well, honestly, like. My mom, she really did help me out a lot, just with like discipline and all that. Like yeah. she was, she was always a little harder on me, but it's because she had to be. Because I know it, like knowing now, looking back, like it is tough raising a man, you know, as a single woman. But she, she did the best she could. And then honestly, what really helped me was like starting uh, my relationship with God. You know, uh, I started going to church more and like really trying to hone in on like my relationship with Him. Because I was on it, like. Although I was fighting all the time, you know, outwardly and all that, it really showed me, like, inwardly how much I was fighting, too. Like, there was so much, like, going on at home, you know, dealing with, you know, different financial stuff, you know, looking different than a lot of the other kids, you know, not having that father figure in the household. Like, there was just so much going on in my head. And, like, I guess, like, looking back on it, I was just, like, acting out because of it, you know, like just like needing some attention or, or things like that. And then that's when football stepped in and like really helped, helped me like kind of channel that anger. And then with the mix of like, you know, starting my relationship with God and then the discipline from being brought up as a freshman in high school, um, I just decided, you know, like that's just not the life I wanted. I knew I wanted to go D1. So uh, a lot of the coaches said, like, if I kept on that path, then I wouldn't be able to. And, like, that was just my biggest dream. Like, I'm like, man, I just want to buy my mom a crib. I want to go D1. So mm -hmm. that was the goal. And I just, like, stopped with the shenanigans for real. That's pretty – freshman year, that's pretty young. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I started – it was pretty cool. Yeah, you're, you're certainly an impressive individual. So it's just interesting to, you know, hear about – the, the windy path towards, you know, where we all are today. So, all right, so we're in yeah. we're in senior year. You've wanted to go D1 since freshman year. Uh, you were recruited for wrestling, but when did the football recruiting start? Football recruiting started my sophomore year. Um, I was getting looks from a lot of Division One schools. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I was, like, obviously a bigger, aggressive guy in Illinois. Um I, I never really never really did too much um 
specific camps, you know, I coaches would be like, yeah, you know, come down to our camp. I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know if my mom wants to drive all the way to California, you okay. know, like different stuff like that. Like I just always thought like it was – and like my head coach at the time told me like, you know, a lot of them do it for the money, this, that, the third. So I did some mega camps in the summer just to like showcase sure. my talents, all that. But even th- like even then, I really didn't know about the extra training. Like they, yeah. I think they started doing like um, you know how they do seven on seven and stuff. They started doing like lineman specific stuff. Uh, really, my senior year. Yeah, I just it, it was it's called boom football. Like huh. it's like all of Illinois. Like it's this big seven on seven thing. Uh, it's like trench warfare thing. So like one on ones with O line D line. But I I literally just had no idea about it. Like. All I knew was to go to workouts for the football team and then, like, whatever I could find on YouTube, put that sure. in on the field. You know what I'm saying? So, but, yeah, I was getting looks uh, since sophomore year. And then my junior summer going into senior year is when the D1 offer started rolling in. Uh, my first offer was Southern Illinois. And then a lot of schools just started pulling the trigger after that, which was really fun. Um, was this take for some, O-line? Yeah. No. Oh, so I I had two offers for O line. Okay. It was um, Eastern Illinois and Tennessee Martin. So they were offering mm-hmm. me for O line, yeah. yeah. and then the rest were D line. Um, okay. So yeah, it was cool. Just like taking those visits out to North Dakota. Like it, North Dakota was probably my favorite visit. Uh, not North Dakota State, North Dakota University, like the Fighting Hawks. Okay. That was yeah. really fun to see. Like their stadium indoor like it was just really cool it was a really cool I'm saying, i hope um, they have a dome out there yeah they got probably a dome used to out play there. in chicago yeah it was it was cool you know uh being recruited by these schools uh talking to guys like lovey smith because like he was a he was a bears head That's coach so and then he yeah. moved uh on to university of illinois so yeah, it was cool yeah. just getting all these interests and uh just being recruited it was a really fun time so did you have a preference then of, of where you wanted to play, D line versus O line? Um, I don't really have a preference, but um, just talking to a few different coaches and all that. Um, for what I'm trying to do, like you know, I obviously want to play this at the highest level I can. Uh, height wise, it just makes more sense for me to play D line. I loved O line so much, but it's just a few inches off, you know, because um, when the NFL uh, guys came in and like measured all of us, you know, they, they make you put your heels together, chin down and all that. That's crazy, your boy only dude. Your boy only got 6'1", so, you know. Yep. That's not bad, though. That'll work for yeah. D-line, though. That'll work. But yeah, yeah, yeah dude. And that's the thing. Aaron so, Donald, you I, know, they didn't stick to him on the yeah. left tackle, right tackle, but he's, you know, one of the greatest football players ever. Exactly. I don't even think he's 6'1". Maybe with the No, team. yeah, they got him – they got him at, like, six foot five eleven. so, mm-hmm. yeah, no, they're – and even this year, you know, in the in the this past draft, they drafted four uh, six foot six one D linemen uh, like Byron Murphy and all that. So, how tall um, is Michael Pierce? Michael Pierce is six foot. There's a trend here. Yeah, it's like almost the it's like the Golden Lock size. Yeah, uh, great, uh, Grady Jarrett. He's six foot. Oh yeah. So I love Euro right yeah. there. He's like the only oh, yeah. good football. There until I guess Bijan got here, but, but mm-hmm. so yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you don't see too many six foot six one oh linemen going. So mm-hmm. no, maybe, yeah. maybe a center from Iowa. That's about it. Mm-hmm. That's it. All those dudes are like six five, three twenty, just yeah, big. I wrestled. I wrestled an Iowa yeah. uh, left guard in high school. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sure he was. How'd thick. that turn out? Yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> all yeah. right. So you're going, you're get, you're getting recruited. All is well, um, and you ended at Olivier Nazarene in AIA. So yeah, what what you. was what happened? Yeah. What's so uh, really, and this is the same thing, just with less not knowing. You know, not really having much guidance with my decision. Um, my mom, you know, tried to like make it personally my decision as much as she could. You know, she didn't want to, like, be a deciding factor. Same thing with my coach at the time. Um, And so, like, I went to this church camp, and I don't know, like, again, I'm just, like, 
I wasn't really all there with like my decision making because I just didn't know. And I just felt like I was supposed to go to Olivet to like be a pastor. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I just thought that's like what I was supposed to do, you know? And so I turned down all my D1 offers. Um, wow. I was like one of the top, I was, I was one of the top D linemen in Illinois. And um, I turned them all down to go to Olivet. And it wasn't the experience, you know, that I thought it would be, you know, okay. especially with like the religious studies and all that. Like I, as I started like growing into myself and learning who I am, I really realized that like, I didn't have to go to school to like, you know, preach God's word, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I started learning that. And then really the football, like it wasn't pushing me, you know, like practice easy. Like I'm not, I'm not having a strain. We're, our workouts, we're doing dumbbell. I mean, we're we're doing curls. Like our like sprints and stuff in the off season, we were doing it in the quad of the school. Like, cause you know the facilities aren't crazy. So there's kids walking to class and we're just sprinting up the concrete. Like, you know, it was an interesting um, experience. And like my sophomore year, I played zero tech there and I had 82 tackles just that season. Like so. It, it it wasn't really pushing me, but academically as a oh that's yeah, like the, that's like that's like when I play Madden and put it on a rookie level and yep. I was playing Aaron Donald and I'm just wrecking. Yep. Eighty two tackles as the nose guard. Eighty two, yeah, as the nose. Oh my so, goodness. Yeah, it just wasn't really pushing me, and I am grateful for my time. I I'd say the people I met were really cool, like my different teammates and all that. Like, cause I feel like there's a big thing when like your freshman year, like your it, the new experiences, the people you come in with, you won't ever forget that. So yeah, I just realized like, you know, this wasn't for me. And I, I kind of always would tell people like, yeah, I could have went D1, but you know, this, yeah. and I was tired of saying that, like, I don't yeah. want to be like a, I could have been guy, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I decided to step out. Um, I Wait, also so trans- time out. Let's back up. Let's back up. So you turned down all the D1 offers, but when did they approach you? Um, Olivet? Yeah. Uh, they started recruiting me my sophomore year. Okay. You know, when, when like, you don't really have that many offers. Like, yep. So know, they were kind so. of always in the back of your mind. Yeah. And, like, and where are they, where are they located? Are they in Illinois? Kankakee, Illinois. Kankakee. It yeah. doesn't sound like Not Chicago. Not going to try that yeah. Yeah, it was an interesting, interesting program. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Interesting school. Um, interesting school. Well, yeah, I did a little Google of it, and I was like, interesting place. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, as you were saying, not the development you were looking for. Right. How long were you there? Um, I was there for three semesters. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so. And so, I, I kind of. When, when did you decide that, that you wanted to get out? So actually it was an event, you know, for fun, they would go to the uh, cornfields, you know, and I'm not a cornfield yeah. type of guy, but oh, really? one time I just, oh yeah, no. Interesting. I just decided to yeah. go and they were having like this little bonfire, like playing a guitar and I'm sitting there like, man, what am I doing here? Like, <laughs> I, like I was real life reflecting, like. I'm just like, man, like, I'm sitting around a bonfire with these random people in the cornfields. Like, this can't be it. This can't be no. it. There's no way I can spend the next three years of my life here. So um, I just decided, you know, with all those, I was like, I got to hit the portal. And I actually hit the portal at the same time. Um, I don't know if you guys know who this is, uh, Jason Freeman. He – uh he was a safety for the South Dakota State um, Jackrabbits. Okay. okay. Yeah, he got like All American, all that. So he was at Olivet as well, and we both transferred at the time. And um, it was rough. It was looking rough. I can't lie. Yeah. It was so all rough. right. So the, the you hit the portal, um, and that was, it was kind of during the time where like yeah, there's technically tampering was going on, but nothing like now where. When right. guys at the portal, they're like declaring immediately where they're going. Yeah. So it had it's a little scarier back then when you entered. Way scarier. It was bad. Like 
all the coaches that I that I talked to in the past, I'm saying I'm hitting them all up. Right, right. Nothing. Nathan. They they like some are high Damn. school coaching now, some are other places. And also it was a weird time because I was transferring um in the winter. So there was coaches like leaving schools, yeah. like it was just this whole thing. Like I'd hit up a coach who was at South Dakota State, but next week they're going to Southern Illinois, you know, like it was just so weird, like all the coaching shifts and all that. Sure, and sure. I actually, this, I had a whole. Sorry, sorry, is this after your second season? Yeah, yeah. This, Win, the, winter, the so game like, after my second season, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the day after my second season, I all all semester I made a Google Doc and I was just, um, I, I Twitter DM'd every coach that I could think of, like, in the nation, and it was crazy. Like, I really – you know, some coaches are like the first coach that hit me was Texas uh, State, and he was like, "Yeah, Big Josh, like you're a Bobcat already. Like we can't wait to get you down here." Blah blah blah. He said, "Hit my phone ASAP." I said, "Bet, coach. Like, what's your number?" Yada yada yada. Man, a week later, I'm like, "Yeah, coach. You know, still waiting on that number." And it was just a lot of those like where it's like, ah, like you know, they hit you up. They like your film, but they don't really say anything too much after that. And um, eighty-two I was tackles, stressing. though. Eighty-two. I know. Like, how does that not? But I, I guess it's the level of competition they think you sure. know NAI is. Yeah. So, uh, but, but I, still... I thought because I had D one offers before, like they'd be like, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. But um, yeah, it was it was looking rough and. Uh, Eastern Illinois, you know, pulled the first offer, um, and it wasn't the, really the scholarship I was looking for, but it was also to play O-line again. So, like, I was like, if I have to, you know, I'm going to have to. But yeah. Yeah. Um, it wasn't really, like, what I was looking for. I took a visit down there, all that. But then this random school in Birmingham, Alabama, hit me up, Sanford, and I was like, what the heck is this? Like, <laughs> So they hit I you. I remember – yeah, yeah, yeah. So – the coach at the time, the D line coach, he's from the Chicago land area. Okay. And um he was trying to recruit me in high school when he was at uh it's a school in North Dakota, Sioux Falls. Okay. When he was at yeah. Sioux Falls, he was trying to recruit me. But that's when I was like getting D one offers and stuff. So I wasn't really, you know, um talking to Division Two schools at the time, ironically. But um <laughs> Yeah, he hit me up and he was like, "Hey, I remember you from camps, this, that, the third. Uh, he like had a little home visit, uh, you know, just to like check things out, tell me about Samford, and he offered me. So he I came up. Like, he came up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came up wow. to me, um, and it was it was just a really cool experience. Um, I was a little worried just because of like there was like some paperwork issues from going from NAI to NCAA. Sure. So we were just like waiting on the NCAA to confirm my scholarship and the papers didn't clear until like two weeks after I already came down to Alabama. So I was stressing. Wow. I'm like, that is man, I might, yeah. like I couldn't go to workouts. Like I was just sitting there and, but it was like, it was the best opportunity, you know, um, to do. So I was just grateful for him, you know, taking a chance on me and, yeah, I ended up in Birmingham, Alabama, which I'd never thought I'd do. But you know, that is I'm very that's grateful crazy. for. Wild. Yeah. So Reaching out to the all risk. those coaches and mm -hmm. Sanford. Yeah, that is wild. Yeah, and I, I'm is crazy. Go ahead, Mike. Well, I was gonna say. I mean, going from you know running drills on the quad to Sanford's facilities, especially when they just implemented Project. Samson and all that. Like, what was yeah. what was your first workout like at Sanford? Did it kick you in the butt? Oh my gosh! Like, probably for a week, I was like, man, I might not be cut out for this. Because like, <laughs> it was just so much different. Like the even the weight room <clears throat> stuff. Like we're we're moving weight fast. Like mm -hmm. the the running, the conditioning. Like I literally felt like I was dying the first week, and I. You know, Coach Mather's yelling at the new guys, so he's like, he's he's all on my case, and I'm like, man, like, this is insane, like, and it really showed me because like we were doing some uh, sim training and all that too, 
uh, some like OTAs. And I was like, these boys down here take football serious. Like this is, this is the real deal. Cause like, it really showed me not too many teams from down South recruit up North like that. You know what I mean? Sure. So, um, these guys Maybe they south. should start doing it more. Yeah. I mean, it sounds <laughs> oh, like yeah. – I don't think school. I could name a single yeah. Chicago kid that's played football in the south like that I know of. I'm sure there's tons I of can. them. But yeah. We don't, yeah. You, Josh. But, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but – That's it. Typically, it's Mississippi, Alabama, it Louisiana, is. Texas. But if the if yeah. the North Dakota schools and the South Dakota schools are recruiting Chicago, yeah. they have and that's what good it track is. record. So maybe that's we need to is. start sniping some more kids, but – uh, yeah. So, all right. So you get, to, had you ever been to Alabama before? No, never. Like I, I wasn't in Alabama once. Like I, I never really went to the South. I was like, about to say, where's the furthest South you'd been? Kentucky. Yeah. That was the furthest. The one of these Southerners. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Our so vacations how's... were visiting my cousins in Minnesota. So it was always North. <laughs> I love Minnesota, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty up there, but like the heat, man, yeah, the humidity. Yeah. Like, that's tough. That's a tough transition. Yeah, the weather down here sucks. The weather um, down here is rough. All right, so yeah. Birmingham. So you get down to Bur- Alabama, Birmingham. Big, big difference from Chicago, but yeah. probably better than the cornfields. Uh, oh yeah, of all of that. Yeah, way, way better. Mm-hmm. Way better. Like Kank- downtown Kankakee is just terrible. <laughs> Oh, they've it's got a downtown. <laughs> At least they have a downtown. Yeah, That's right. They have a downtown. It's, down, yeah. it's it's really not downtown though, but like a one stop light terrible. type town. Yes. Yeah. So, did you meet Coach Hatcher? Like, at what point did you meet Hatcher? I'd say like three weeks into workouts. Oh, wow. dude, you committed without ever yeah. meeting him. Yeah, I committed without even visiting. Like my my visit got canceled because of that paperwork. So, yeah, okay. it was it was rough. Um, I didn't meet none of the. I, all I knew was the D line coach that recruited me. Like, I didn't know what Birmingham was. I didn't get to do the visit. Nothing. So, but it was like it was the best deal, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. other than like what Eastern Illinois offered me. So, I just had to do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's. I mean, look, we're pumped. It all worked out. Yeah, like yeah, love it. But that's wild. I mean, what, so what happens theoretically if it doesn't work out? Are you you just stay on the team as a walk on? Was it a scholarship issue, or was it truly an eligibility issue? Um, I I still honestly don't know like what the whole thing yeah. was. I want to say scholarship, just like getting it clear through the NCAA. So if it didn't work out, um, I'd be a regular student for the spring semester, yeah. and then in the fall it would be cleared. But yeah, I just thank God it got cleared when it did because. That was rough. All right, yeah. so you came so the, so your first year was 22, right? Mhm. All right, yeah, so you came on with a pretty special team. So yeah. who were some of the first guys that kind of made an impression on you on the team? Yeah, so when I first got here, you know, like I'm from the north, I'm kind of seeing like what like the south is talking about and like I'd sit by myself a little bit cuz I wasn't re- I didn't really know anybody. Sure. And the first people that uh I ran into were these guys, Titus Gardner and Ty Bowles. Uh, they were like the social butterflies of Sanford. Like they knew everybody. So they were the perfect people to run into, yeah. like literally perfect people. Cause like they knew everybody on campus and they introduced me to so many people and it was just a really cool thing. They introduced me to Ransom. Like it was a really cool, um, it was really cool to meet them. And then um, I started hanging out a little bit with uh, Daniel Bettis uh he he did ransom as well so it was just cool those were the first guys i ran into and um yeah i just started rolling with them yeah that's nice it's always good to have as you say the two social butterflies uh, yeah be your first connects so yeah so that you got plugged in with the ransom you're currently leading it and did you say that you were leading it last year as well yeah, yeah, I've been leading it uh, for a little bit now. It's, Dude, it's so been, you like hopped in full force. I mean, yeah, that's the equivalent, I guess, of a soft like second year at Sanford, starting mm-hmm. to lead that group, which is a pretty yeah. prominent. It's a uh, big group. Group on campus. So talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Yeah, it was. 
really, it, it just was like a cool way to get involved. And kind of like I said, I was doing the pastoral ministry thing. And like, I knew I wanted to, you know, serve and impact people to a capacity. I just didn't know what that looked like. Sure. And um, Ty and Titus introduced me to it. And at first they introduced me to uh, Jeremy Towns. He played the D-line legends. at Samford. Yes. Yeah, went yeah. to the league, all that. So he started Ransom. He's pretty yeah, unimpressive. Um, NFL. He's yeah. a doctor, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Doctor, I mean, yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. Easy. It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. So, yeah, he introduced me to him. And, like, I didn't really know who he was. So I was just like, oh, like, what's up? That's you know, funny. Yeah. I just kind of, you know, played it cool. But, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no, he – he um he's really helped me out a lot having him in my corner just being a mentor for me like I, I just like am winning in my life now like starting to really see like what I can do with um you know the scriptures you know like actually like adding them to my life you know actually you know just getting outcomes you know what I'm saying so I'm really grateful for him and then being able to be a part of next level sports camps that's really like the bread and butter like I love the sport shoot I'm wearing a so next what level, is that? What is next level so, sports camp? Yeah, next level sports camps is a is free sports camps uh, in the Birmingham area. Um, we have basketball, football, and volleyball right now, and we basically use um, we basically use the platform of sports to impact the kids in Birmingham. You know, because as y'all sweet. know, Birmingham's a little rougher area. So sure. having a free camp where they get free shirts, they're around the top leaders in Birmingham. We had uh, the mayor speak at the basketball camp last year. Uh, We had my good friend Trey Jemison speak at the camp. Like we have, uh, we had um, Bradbury at the last football camp. So they're, they're, they're around top level guys getting, you know, trained by them, free food, drinks. Like it's just a, it's just a day about them to where they can see that they don't have to like fall down a certain path. And like, this stuff like this really encourages me because kind of like I told y'all a little bit about with my younger story, just not looking up to anybody. If I had a camp like this, like I'd want to be around it instantly. Like division one football players are here. NFL players are here. Like that's exposure. I had no idea you could have. So just being able to impact the kids is really amazing to me. And I, I love it. I'm actually interning with a next level right now. So. Yeah, dude, that's a man. I, I didn't. So we don't want to miss this opportunity. If someone wants to support Next Level, is there like a website they can go to to donate? Like, how do they get their? Funding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we 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 get funded through Next Level and Ransom. It's it's they're kind of together. It's okay. it's a together thing. Um, just through the Ransom Ministry. So yeah, you can look up Ransom U um on Instagram. You can look up Next Level Sports on Instagram. It's a really cool opportunity, and we have a. Uh, the next football camp is actually July thirteenth. So, that's nice. yeah. We'll we'll link it. That's sweet. That's dude. awesome. That is, uh, yeah. yeah. That sounds like a ministry that can be get, that can have a profound impact on a ton of kids. Um, yeah, and especially really like cool. in places like Birmingham, kids need free resources like that. Yeah, uh, and that's like a quality free resource because there's the old it saying is. like you get what you pay for. But in this sense, this Literally. sounds amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Chick Fil A sandwiches for lunch. There you go. Like these kids right, well, eat that up. You think I can go? Like, I, yeah. Hey, come on, man, pull up. <laughs> yeah. Popsicles, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, all that. Like a lot, and a lot of these kids never even had a Chick Fil A sandwich before. So yeah, it's just really. really cool to see, like, yeah, seeing them their dreams fulfilled. So that's awesome, man. You've been, it sounds like you've been extremely involved in the Birmingham community for <laughs> yeah. two years. That's yeah. just wild. Hey, I, I'm, I'm on top Birmingham. of school and football. Josh is plugged yeah. in, everybody. Yeah. Like, this is this is what yeah. this is a this is what a mover and shaker looks like right there. You you get planted in Birmingham and then boom, uh, blossoming. So that's that's awesome, dude. Um, so ransom a student min- or student campus ministry. Um, you've been you've been leading that for two years. What mm-hmm. is the leadership aspect of that look like? Yeah, so I mean, we uh, hand out flyers, just giving people the opportunity to, you know, hear the word. We give out flyers every Monday morning, and it's really big with like community building. That's our biggest thing is just building community because, like, the biggest mission is knowing that, like, you don't have to do this walk alone, especially in college. So it's been cool, like, just being able to be in community with people who I probably never would 
talk to on a regular basis if I wasn't doing this. So just being able to be surrounded by different people, see different stories, you know, grow. That's the biggest thing. And then helping those people also who, who decide to join the leadership team win in life by being around different mentors that we have um, at Ransom, like JT, like uh, John Cross, Kennard. You know, we have guys who are just like all over the Birmingham community who look like us, but are still growing. You know what I'm saying? They've played football, they've been in sports, but they're still continuing to have impact on the city. So it's been cool just to be able to see that. So. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That is you all sweet. still meet it at, at, in the Mountain View lobby. So Sanford's under some bad construction right now. Yeah, There's that's construction right. all over campus. So a lot of those roads are closed where Mountain View was. So yeah. now, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we meet in a different building right now. So um, Sam, you probably remember. I think it was like Monday nights. Yep. That worship would get loud. And yeah. It was yeah. Crazy. Yeah. That's cool. All right, so Josh, talk to us. Let's transition back to football a little bit. So you've been here two seasons. Uh, mm. Any favorite moments? Any favorite teammates? Uh, if your Sanford career ended right now, and let's just say the NFL calls, what what would be some of the stuff that you you hold on to uh, at your time so far at Sanford? Man, there's been some characters to walk through Sanford. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's to- you just get. You just get people from all over. Uh-huh. Um, ah, there's so many moments and memories. I'd say North Dakota State was a really fun memory for me. Not only just the football, but being able to travel. You know, um, my roommate for all my trips was Coy Freeman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was just so fun. Like, obviously, we're two different people, and it was cool. Just like, you know, talking to him. He's a really funny guy. Uh, it's been really, it was really fun, you know, uh, cause he has some daughters as well. So okay. being able to, you know, play with them, it was just yeah. like, man, I felt like I was an uncle sometimes, you know? Yeah, so I love that. My guy, Coy, uh, ah, there's just so many guys. Chandler Smith has been one of my, one yeah. of, one of my guys, you know, we always joke around with each other, like how he's the face, uh, in the voice, but then he'll say the same thing with me. And then, my guy, Chris Noble, man, Chris is my guy. Like, you know, he's, he's definitely pushes me on the field to be better. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's definitely going to be a, he's going to be a great O lineman this year. Um, but also just being able to hang out with him, make memories with him, but I have to shout out, you know, this is, this is a guy that makes me laugh every single day. Like it's just not a dull moment with him. And it's my sweet mate, Will Thorley. You know what I'm saying? He's the punter. Right, Will and Thorley. We're, we're, just, we're just on opposite <laughs> sides of the spectrum. Like, I'm a big D lineman. He's a punter from Australia. So the fact that we're friends and, you know. Yeah, that wasn't who I thought out, you were about to say. I, if you could have yeah, given no, me 100 guesses, I ain't guessing the punter. I know. That's my guy, though. Like, he, ne- so like, he is one of the funniest people on the team. Like, his accent. I, I just die. Like we we're always trying to mock his accent. So we'll be like, Oi mate. Like, you know, just different things like that. Like Will, Will, Will is really my guy. So um, we've definitely grown close over the years. Um, I've, I've really shown him around the States a little bit. So I brought him to Chicago a few uh, last summer to right. you know, go to the Cubs Cubs Cubs. game. Oh, we went to Patillo's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's a Cubs fan now, so we hit up the go. Cubs game. Um, I mean, and then we drove to Nashville, which, you know, wasn't a great experience. But, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's been cool. But Will, Will's definitely one of the top top two funniest guys on the That's team. Hilarious. That's awesome. Dude. The punter from Australia. Punter from Australia. Yep. Melbourne. Get Melbourne. From Melbourne. This is random, Josh, but um, – who do you think our rival is in football? You know, it's very random. I was just curious. Very, I was just curious thinking. I was like, yeah. You know, there's a you know the saying that you know fear no one, respect everyone. So you know, I don't want to you know down you, you know downplay and talk too much trash here. But me personally, I don't like anyone in the SoCon. 
I well, that's like the thing. There's a lot of options. It's like there is, there is outside but, of maybe Citadel. I mean, there's a lot yeah, of bad blood everywhere. Respect Western, especially yeah, no, UTC, yeah. Furman, UTC. Walford oh, hates yeah. us. Yeah, I didn't Mercer's know Walford hates us actually. But. So I will say I'm gonna have to go with Furman. You know, uh, that's definitely one of our biggest rivals, but. It's interesting. It's interesting you say that though, because like a lot of the people who we feel are our rivals, like aren't even our rivals. Like I guess Furman doesn't see us as a rival because no. the other team in North Carolina, um, they're, they're my Carolina, their main rivals. Walford. Well, they got Wofford, which is two minutes down the yeah. road. Exactly. Kind of so exactly. So, but yeah, I, we you know don't truly get along with Furman. Um, Chattanooga comes comes there close and I didn't know about Western you know because after our 2022 season but after last year's game they're yeah. dirty oh my god oh yeah they are yeah, redneck so, to the core and dirty yeah so uh we're gonna we're gonna see about this upcoming season but I don't like <laughs> anyone in the SoCon you know but that that's just I feel like that's just an up north thing though like I don't like any other school period like because I go to Sanford that's the only school I root for like but a lot yeah. of the a lot of my like the students at Sanford don't get that. Like they're walking around with Georgia gear on, Auburn, and I'm like, whoa, like you go to Sanford, but they're like, my parents, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, I don't want to hear that. You go to Sanford. If you Sam and I are Auburn, both guilty of this. Go to so. Auburn. Man, I that's no, but just, see, like, Josh, this is America. You know, we, we like talk, to have we our talk about it all too. the time. If, if Sanford, Sanford – because I'm a Tennessee fan, Sam's an Oklahoma fan, we got UNC, Oklahoma. If Sanford were to play our big school, we, we pull for Sanford all day. I don't oh. care if it's the national championship. I don't care if it – you know, if Sanford goes and beats Tennessee to keep Tennessee out of the national championship, I still pull for Sanford. So Yeah. See, that's love and right there. I don't know if I rep – I'm trying to think. I think I've I got an OU shirt, but I rep that Sammy you had everywhere I go. I don't, yeah. I'm surprised I don't have it I on just, right now. You, you will never catch me with another college ever in my life. I like, love that. Ever. But, but hold Stanford on. Time out. Time out. Slight another caveat here. So just like, you know, you're when you won the triple jump against all the Hispanics, uh, you're also from the north. So you're a Bears yeah. fan through and through. In the South, oh, yeah. like that's the equivalent no, of our NFL. That's it's a like good the point. SEC, yeah. you know, that's it's a little di- little different. Little different. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I'm all Chicago all, Bulls, Blackhawks, Cubs, the Bulls. Bears. They play basketball, right? Oh yeah, you know, you'll see them. Uh, they do. Ball the just got a new. That's what I, I thought. Ball they just played in the nineties. No, yeah, Again, what's this? Is like his so fourth good. ACL. It's a donor ACL now, so uh, <laughs> we'll be good. We'll be good. And they play baseball in Chicago, or do those teams leave? Oh no, they play. Uh, the Cubs actually won in uh, 2016. If you, oh, if that's right. Actually, oh uh, yeah, y'all are still yeah, talking yeah. about it. How could we forget? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was a that was a hundred year curse. So yeah. Well, that's what happens when you spend a billion dollars. That's what the Dodgers are trying to do this year. Um, but yeah. So anyway, back to Sanford. Back to back to the SoCon. Um, favorite. This is my last football question. But favorite SoCon game so far. I think I might know what you're going to say, but I'm curious to hear what, what you're going to say. Was it from this past season or 2022? Any of the above, whatever you want. The past season, I'd say from, from this past season, my favorite game would probably have to be – I'm going to go with Furman. Furman was a pretty good game. Um, you know, they beat us by a touchdown, uh, but it – it, it was definitely eye opening, you know what I'm saying? Like I know I had a I had a pretty good game against Furman and we lost and all that, but you know, it created a little chip on our shoulder when uh the NCAA posted on Instagram them walking out of our stadium talking about walking your trap, take over your trap, uh best in the nation, this, that, the third, and we only lost by a touchdown. It was like ah so That's Furman. You um, give them yeah. an inch, they'll take a mile. My goodness. Oh, yeah. So you know, we're looking forward to this next year, but from last from last season, I'd say my favorite from twenty twenty two, my favorite game was probably Mercer. That was such a fun That's game. That's what I was gonna like, guess. Yeah, the thought, Mercer yeah. Game. Yeah. yeah. The back and forth, fourth down stops that we, that I was a part of were awesome. Like that was a really fun game. I really enjoyed it. Mercer was awesome. And then same thing with Southeast Louisiana the week after, like yeah. that was just yeah. fun. 
All it was fun football. Quincy show. Yep. Goal line stands, all that. Yeah, awesome. 22 had a lot of good memories. 23 had a lot of good memories, too. It just – stuff didn't quite fall our way. Uh, but yeah. The Auburn game was fun. Out. Yeah, we dude, the Auburn game was so down. fun. Oh, my gosh. That like, pick in the, the Auburn zone. fans being quiet. Yes. You know, yeah. we had uh, Jaden Mosley with the pick. He went yeah. up to the stands like this. Uh, we had um, Cortland Marsh with the pick, and he's – it was yep. just an awesome Dude, time. it was a sad um, day when Cortland hit the portal. It was like, man, that guy was a rock on the defense. But, you know, we get it. We get it. Uh, uh, general thoughts on the portal. We, I want to get to, you know, where goals and aspirations, but general thoughts on the portal since, you know, you used it. But we've obviously seen – I mean, look, there are guys that will hop in and that didn't turn out the way that they thought. Right. Um, yeah, the portal's interesting, man. Um, I think it's great for guys, you know, who, like, want to get some better opportunity, who, like, are trying to move up, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like guys like uh, Graziani with Sanford basketball, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was D2, wanted to, you know, uh, move up a little bit. So I see that. And then definitely some, like, FBS guys. I've seen a lot of FBS guys who are, like, walk-on, who – um transfer down and they're having the opportunity to play uh opportunity to get scholarship which is really cool um but i think it, it does get a little interesting with guys who like hit that boy every year like i got some i got some homies who have been to a new school every single year and it's like ah like i get you know you it might not be the best situation but like in the past you would just have to work past that situation like you just got to keep working hard and and beat that person out but now it's like, ah, it's not going my way. Well, I'm going to just hit the portal and find a new school. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely think it's by situation. But at the same time, I can't really blame guys for that when, like, coaches can do the same thing, you know. Like, coaches can leave tomorrow, and it's like, whatever. Like, no buy, nothing. Like, yep. they're gone to the next yep. school. So yeah. it, it, it definitely gets tricky. But I think it is interesting right now with uh, – football players being paid money and stuff, you know, like they're going to go to a school based on how much money they're getting. And, you know, Sanford, we're not, you know, you know we don't got to mention that, but. Wait, we like, don't have the, I, I was, the million dollar NIL train rolling in Homewood? No, no, not in Homewood. So, uh, <laughs> not yet. Not it is, yet. We'll it is cool though. A lot of guys who um are coming here are coming here to play good football, you know, like, and it's not just about money, which you can see with like a lot of the guys, like we're here to like, actually work and win and like build something but I literally like maybe it's because I'm out of the loop but I found out this month like there's guys getting paid six figures to play football and I was like six figures yes like it didn't even make sense to me for a minute like they're getting like uh my sweet mate Will was telling me how one of his he, he keeps up with all the Australian punters they're all from like the same area and one of his guys is getting paid two hundred thousand dollars a year as a punter. A punt, bro. Yes. I'm sorry, that's a waste of money. Yeah, but that, but that's light. That's light. No, no well, no offense like, if you're listening to this. No offense. Yeah. <laughs> so that's slight to them though. Like, and I, I thought that was insane. Like, that's I did insane. not know people that were getting insane. paid that much. Like, so. Yeah, you always wonder. You see these nil valuations, and they're like way up there, but. It, then you see all these players that'll transfer three times in one off season because they get to the school and they're not getting what they're promised. So you never actually know what's true. What's not. I think everybody expects yeah. more than they're, they're actually getting, but right. 200 grand for a punter. I know. I need to start stretching. I mean, Josh, <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah, ball. pretty agile. Punter. I'm sure you got soccer experience. You can do this. Yeah, Josh, you can do a good punter, man. Man, I tell Will that all the time that I could take his spot. Like, I bet, if I, I could bet. go back, I'm punning. <laughs> I promise I'm punning. Dude, Maybe you'd go viral. You would go yeah. by as the punter. They come in for that block, for the block, and you just lower it's your like, shoulder. No way. Yeah. yeah. You got, <laughs> it's like the ball. hefty lefty, that one quarterback. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, all right, dude. So talk to us. Goals, aspirations uh, after Sanford. Yeah, so, immediate, I mean, I'm I'm sorry? Immediate and beyond. So, yeah, immediate. Um, 
my goal is to play at the next level. So I want to take that as far as I can and, you know, whatever God has in store for me. So I'm going to be training for the uh, pro day or hopefully get invited to a, a senior bowl or a combine of some sorts, you know. So uh, I'll be training for that. My mom lives in Tampa, so there's a lot of cool, um, there's a lot of different places you can go in Tampa to train. I want, I, I love Birmingham and I'd love to stay, but there's not many places to train here, um, especially for like what I'm trying to do. So I'll be in Florida for that spring time and, you know, I'm just hoping for the best, you know, continue to work uh, and wherever it lands me, it lands me. Obviously the number one goal is NFL, but um, I'm not opposed to going UFL or CFL, you know what I'm saying? So I just want to continue to play this game. Oh yeah, they're, they're working. They're working. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not – I just want to, you know, play this as, as long as I can, um, especially with, like, the platform it gives me and then that kind of segueing into, like, the next level camps and all that, like, just impacting the youth. That's the – that's my number one overall goal is, like, impacting the youth and having that platform really does help. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's my immediate goal. And then eventually I probably want to, like, get into coaching uh, – uh, coaching really is like a passion of mine, just like seeing people, see, seeing the ones under me, like winning, you know what I'm saying? Like I've always just loved those type. obviously through next level camps and all that. I just, I just love that aspect of it. Uh, that aspect of the game, just coaching seems really cool to me. I love, you know, talking and going new places. So the recruiting part would be great to me. You know, I think I'd be a great recruiter. Um, I can really talk, recruit, recruit people onto the team. Uh, you know, I'm, I've been practicing that now with different areas in life. If you know what I mean, I can recruit some people to my team. So, uh, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely, yeah. So that's definitely, you know, the immediate and further goals, uh, maybe eventually down the line getting into like, um, administration spots, you know, within sports and all that, but that's, that's the goals for right now. So, yeah. Dream coaching gig, dream NFL team. Dream coaching gig. I'm going to have to go with – I'll be the D-line coach for – honestly, I'd go anywhere. <laughs> I, probably, I Honestly, I like – if Wyoming called me when I wanted to That'd coach, be kind of cool. Though. That'd coach. be kind of cool. Yeah. I, I, like, I just love traveling all over the U.S. So, like, I don't really have a preference. I just – D-line coach at some Division One school. Uh, SoCon, don't even – like, I, I really don't want to go to anywhere in the SoCon because I, I, don't I just have you. a hatred for yeah. those teams. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that would that would just be rough. And I, I got some good advice from some of my coaches uh, here just talking about, like, starting as high as you can. So, like, really trying to, like, start at an FBS school, you know, because it will help with um, – your resume and all that, and then sure. Dream NFL team, y'all already know. I don't. I don't even have to. I'm, I don't even have I, to look. You, they play in the snow. Uh, yeah, like, and I'm. I'm great with that. I'm amazing with. I'm cool with it. I, I don't think they're, they're, they're going to try to build that dome, but it's not going to be done by the time you probably even. Oh, retire. I know. <laughs> so I know. it's 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 going to be a cool dome though. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I kind of figured to be a Tampa fan now that your mom's down there, right? My, my mom said she'll move anywhere except okay. for Wisconsin. She said she will not go down to Green Bay. She can't. She said she'll be. She won't be a Green Bay fan if if I ever went there. So. That's amazing. Wow. That's amazing. that's some loyalty. Yeah, that's some. I loyalty. love that. We I just, love that. We just don't like Green Bay. Like I, I remember my first Bears game. We we literally played the Bucks. Like we beat the Bucks. Whatever. It was like when I was fourteen or something like that. And as we were leaving the stadium, we're in this tunnel. Everybody's just cheering F the Packers, but like the Packers weren't the on the Packers schedule even for there. a while. See, like, that's they just, different. They were just, it is. I love it. It's just a strong it. hatred for the Packers. You know what I'm saying? We don't appreciate Aaron, uh, Aaron Rodgers and all them talking about they own us. Y'all don't own us. You know what I'm saying? Mm. We, we just, you know, we get hosed by the refs. That's all. I mean, to be fair, the only one we've been on loan to them man. for a while. They don't really own you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, but yeah, that's definitely the dream, the dream team right there. Um, and I really feel like it's definitely doable. 
Uh, Travis Bell from Kennesaw State got drafted by them, and we're similar in size as well. So, yeah, I, I definitely think it's doable. I'm just trying to continue to put in this work in this off season. Been doing a bunch of different training sessions, uh, mobility sessions, D line work. Uh, even started boxing. So nice. Yeah, some good cross training. Interesting. Uh, good yeah. conditioning. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Mike, you got anything else? Oh, we gotta know. We gotta know your food recommendations in Birmingham. That's right. That's oh right. yeah, this is perfect. I'm so happy y'all said that. I'm a I'm a big guy. You know what I'm saying? I like to eat. There's two places good. that are well. I gotta go three. Three places okay. that are always gonna take my money. The first one is a is a consistent place that's always gonna take my money. Chipotle. I could eat Chipotle <laughs> every day of my life. Dude, that's I what Chris Noble Chipotle. said. Yeah. Great minds think alike. I What's your Chipotle order? Chipotle. I'm gonna guess you're getting like a bowl with extra double steak, chicken, double steak, double guac, double cheese, something like that. So yeah, double white rice first because they try <laughs> okay. to they try to hose you on the on the rice. Yeah, I'm getting That's the free, double right? Okay, every time double white rice. Then I have this hack with the chicken because they try to because they try to hose you on the chicken too. Now yep. I go yes. Can I can I get chicken please? They do they do a good little healthy portion. I'm like, for actually, double. make that double chicken, please. Because then they're going to sprinkle it off. I don't want all that. So I'm going to do the, the little chicken hack right there. Then I get cheese, extra cheese. I get um, sour cream, corn, tomatoes. I was getting lettuce, but then I heard from one of our nutritionists that lettuce has no, no nutritional value. And you're just eating water, so now I'm like, ah, can't really put that on. Learn something anymore. every day. Yeah, and then I get a side tortilla and a water yes. cup. There you yes. go, dude. That's my order, except single all the way. Uh, <laughs> the okay. chicken's good. <laughs> the Chipotle chicken's, the chicken's good. good. The chicken's good. All right, I so usually look and see what, what meat's looking good that day before I decide because <laughs> sometimes their steak doesn't look good. But yeah, sorry. That's what are you? That's true. Next spot. Is a local taco truck on Green Springs Ave. It is this, amazing. Like, what'd you say? This used to be our question to our every listener is, is a debate over what's the best taco truck in Birmingham. And it I has feel to be, like, is it the one at the Chevron parking lot? No. Oh, man. Gas station. Oh. The uh, by which, Red one you, which one are you talking about? Mm-mm. This one is, this one is in a, uh, it's right by a chase. It's called like Los Tra ja, some Los Not Dos Damn. Hermanos. I don't think it's I don't think it's the that. Chase Bank. It's right by Chase Bank off of Green Springs. Oh, I don't know that one. It's a blue it's a blue taco truck. Los okay. Trajos. Yeah, Ooh. Los Trajos. I there there's a third th- that might be the third one that's come up. Maybe. Right? There, there's a there's that. There's a sneaky one that we haven't been to that a few people mentioned. It has to be this one. Maybe. Yeah, it's a blue taco truck. It's in that Chase parking lot right off okay. of Green Springs before you get to, like, this dentist office um, on the other side, and it's just amazing. Every Thursday this summer, me, Will Thorley, Donnie Hawkins, and Daniel Bettis attend this taco truck, and amazing. I'm getting a burrito. I'm getting a steak burrito. With a chicken quesadilla and two and two tacos every time. Oof. Every time. Gosh, you're incredible, dude. That's that insane. is uh, I love it. that's an order right there. All right, you gotta do us I a favor. It. You gotta go to the one on this is the one I like on Green Springs in the Chevron parking lot at the corner We've of been. Green Springs and it's We've dude. been. All right, I'll have to go Overrated. try yours and I'll let you know. You got to. You got to. It's just can't compete. And then right. the but last have you place, been to the one over by do you so are you familiar with the red pearl? I'm not. Okay, well, first off, you need to become familiar yeah. with the you red like pearl. Asian food. That's that's the spot. It's a nice I little, love Asian uh, food. That's well, you de- bro, you need to hit it up. Uh well, there's a fantastic taco truck next door, or like two parking lots over, or something like that. Um that was always my preferred spot. I got the burrito, I never actually got a taco. Um, really, I gotta try everything. Nice. No, the yeah, Red Pearl. It's like a Chinese market with a restaurant, and 
You walk in, it kind oh, of smells I have fishy. Been in the red pool. Yeah, I have been in the red pearl. Yeah. I won a few. I won uh, in 2020. It was obviously very memorable. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. What's the uh, third spot? What's the third spot. Dang. Now, now you. I got to do an honorable mention before I get to the last okay. one. Okay. All right. Honorable Yummy mention. bowl. Yummy bowl. Never been there. Yummy bowl. What is? Is that pokey? You've never been to Yummy Bowl? <laughs> no, the name oh is. Oh my so gosh, y'all, bro! Weird. Yummy Bowl's insane. It's like a hibachi place. Like, oh, you got somebody the mentioned that. I somebody that. else mentioned that before. Yes. That. Yeah, hibachi, bro. Yummy Bowl is insane. I don't I think that was there when we were there. Really? It's I don't so know. Good. I, yeah, it's Yummy so Bowl. Good. Okay. It's it's uh, it's right for, uh, across the street from Walmart, like in that yeah. Whataburger area. That must all be that. More. Yeah. And then another honorable mention, got to throw King's Buffet in there. Such a great buffet, <laughs> Chinese buffet. I love it. No. You know, I I can spend a lot of time. You've you been to King's Buffet? No, because I, I think I'd be in bed I all day. I do love a Chinese buffet, though. Yes, Chinese buffets I, are the it's best. match made in heaven for me, which is yes. why I avoid them. You know, every once in a while, you got to – you gotta. I, um, I hear you. In high school, we went to uh, – it was the Great Wall. They just opened it up. Oh, yeah. About 20 minutes from I'm the high school. all about the Great Wall. We ate, yeah, we ate it. Uh, the coconut shrimp was included oh, in the gosh. all-you-can-eat lunch buffet. Even worse. I turned into a seafood. coconut shrimp. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> the biggest pot and of then, steamed rice. Mm. Oh yeah, I can eat rice all. I just love rice. Rice, like, I can so eat that. All yeah, day. fried rice was was my go to in college. Yeah. All right, so the, the, those oh. are two mentions. I'm excited for the uh, the actual third spot. Third spot, you know, I number one eats. I have to go with wings plus three. Yes, yes. dude. I, yes, I was like, he's gonna say wings plus. Everybody. You cannot get a better deal in all. So of good, game. so good. They they even have like, and obviously this isn't my deal or anything, but they got a Samford number ninety eight jersey up there for some odd reason. It wasn't me, but they got it up but there. It could be. And but it could be. It could be. Sounds like a great. NIL, I, I've tried. I've NIL tried to team. talk to the owner. I've tried, but you know he he hasn't really. Um, been in, you know, like a lot of them are like, oh, like we don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, I appreciate it. <laughs> but I still love it. It feels like home, you know. I got I every time I go with the 15 piece honey barbecue lemon yeah. pepper with yeah. a large Cajun cheese ranch fry. Oof. That sounds so that sounds good, incredible. Yeah. And all that's probably like 10 bucks. Which is what makes that place so good. And raise their prices a little bit. Oh, yeah, I'm, sure they did. I'm sure they All did. that's but about 15 now, but it's, I'm still cool with it. That's still not bad. It's not bad like, for wings. Yeah. Not bad at all. Oof. You're like Asian ranch cheese fries. Yes. Dude. Yes. 15 pound. Run that back. So, hold on. Honey barbecue lemon pepper or split honey barbecue half lemon pepper half? Honey barbecue lemon pepper. Boom. Oh, that's they, all they one the lemon wing. pepper all. Whoa. That is so good. It's that flavor then you, explosion. I mean, you kind of get that that wet lemon pepper, which is what I – that's what I like. But yeah. that's nice. Wow. From the See, pros, look, everybody, that is a pro order. You need to get them to name on the menu the Matthias Special. Yes. Something. Something. Easy money. Yeah, Josh, you got a nickname on the team? That's what they should call it. No, uh, I mean – one that you can share. That's probably it. Math. Yeah, yeah. Because my last name is Matthias, and so they call me Math. I oh, Coach math. Hatch and like, yeah, yeah Math. But yeah. Coach Hatch and like, um, Coach. If y'all remember Coach Boone from yeah. last year, they're con they have like kind of a country accent, so they'd call me yeah. Matt. I don't know why. M A T Matt. They'd be like Big Matt, whatever. And like when uh, Coach Moody's writing our names on the board. It's math every time. So, <laughs> it's just tough down the south. It is. Yeah, it's optional. That's funny. Yeah. It is. <laughs> yep. All right, Mike, anything else? No, man. This has been great, though. Josh, anything you would like to share? You know, just go Bulldogs.
Appreciate y'all. Stay, oh, stay wow. to the Bulldogs, man.